Happy Hanukkah. Happy holidays to everyone. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living here in beautiful San Clemente. We're so glad you're here with us this beautiful Sunday morning. And we'd like you to join our fabulous song leading team up here of Reverend Karen Ellen and Rick Dale. So rise, stand, whether you're at home or here in the sanctuary with us, and join us on our Bruno Mars song called Just the Way You Are. Here we go. <laughs> When I see your face, there's not a thing that I would change, cause you're amazing, just the way you are, and when you smile, the whole world stops and stares for a while, cause you're amazing, just the way you are. Beautiful Center. I'm Reverend Carla Sharadis, and we just want to thank you for bringing your presence into our atmosphere of worship here this morning. It's here on Sundays that we get to share with each other. We get to be inspired by our community, by uh, the message, and by this energy that we create together. And this morning we have a really special service for you. We're super excited and we're going to get started first by our opening ceremony, Lighting the Flames of Faith. We perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges all peoples, all faiths, all sentient beings come from one great universal presence, which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the underlining nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ Consciousness as the path of love. 
we light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as Aidan Greeny lights the last candle, let it represent the path which brought you here this morning. And now I'd like to invite Reverend Alice and our two newest practitioners. Come on up. Jody Charton and Mary Casa. Up here this morning, we have a very special treat for you. We are going to formally and officially welcome and install our two newest practitioners, Jody and Mary. So we're going to do a wonderful ceremony, and so uh, here we go. Jody and Mary. You have chosen a pathway in life that is and ever shall be rich and full and beautiful, full of spiritual discoveries. To serve as a professional religious science practitioner is to lead those who look to you for spiritual guidance into an insurance and an acceptance of the wholeness of spirit, body, and mind. Your deep understanding of life's principle of human nature, your compassion and warm empathy will be called upon by those who look for you for help and as you are a living demonstration of our teaching and our practice of spiritual mind treatment and affirmative prayer. Our founder, Ernest Holmes, was once asked if he could share what exactly Centers for Spiritual Living, then called Religious Science, stood for, and he responded with what we now know as the Declarations of Principle. And so Reverend Carla and I are going to read those now. We believe in God, the living Spirit Almighty, one indestructible and absolute cause. This one manifests itself in, through, all creation, but is not absorbed by its creation. The manifest universe is the body of God. It is the logical and necessary outcome of the infinite self-knowingness of God. We believe in the incarnation of spirit in humankind and that all people are incarnate incarnations of the one spirit. We believe the internality, immortality, and the continuity of the individual soul forever expanding. We believe the kingdom of heaven is within and that we experience this kingdom to the degree that we become conscious of it. We believe the ultimate goal of life to be a complete emancipation from all discord of every nature and that this goal is sure to be attained by all. We believe in the unity of all life and that the highest God and the most, the innermost God is one God. We believe that God is personal to all who feel this indwelling presence. We believe in the direct revelation of truth through the intuitive and spiritual nature of humankind and that everyone may become a revealer of truth who lives in close contact with the indwelling God. We believe that the universal spirit, which is God, operates through universal mind, the law of God. We are surrounded by this creative mind which receives the direct impress of our thoughts and acts upon it. We believe in healing the sick through the power of this mind. We believe in the control of conditions through the power of this mind. We believe in the internal goodness and the eternal loving kindness and the eternal givingness of life to all. 
We believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny. We understand that life of humankind is God. These principles should serve as a guiding light as you accept the mantle of being a practitioner, a licensed practitioner. At this time, I invite you to pledge your alignment and agreement to this philosophy and its principles so that family and friends and community can witness your sacred vows. Do you therefore give your loyalty and support to the Centers for Spiritual Living and agree to live by the principles set forth to the best of your ability? And if you do, please say, I do. I do. do you agree to abide by the policies that which govern a professional practitioner of Centers for Spiritual Living? Do you dedicate yourself to faithful meditation and study in order that you may expand the consciousness of your professional practice? I do. do you dedicate yourself to the utmost to always reflect spirit of truth? I do. do you commit yourself to absolute confidentiality, keeping to yourself the identity and confidences of those who come to you for help unless you receive their explicit consent to do otherwise? And as a loyal and supporting member of the Centers for Spiritual Living Capistrano Valley, will you uphold and support our center and Centers for Spiritual Living through spiritual mind treatment? I do. And finally, do you feel in your heart that you are prepared to serve as a professional religious science practitioner? I do. These vows of dedication which you have assumed are only the outward expression of an inner dedication and consecration to an indwelling presence which you have already made. Through this act you place yourself in a very special relationship with God and to all other people. Your mission is to recognize the deep and abiding harmony at the center of everything. To see through the existing circumstances and affirm the truth that sets each person free. In the fulfillment of your mission, you have the same assurance expressed by the great master teacher. It is the spirit within that doeth the work. The infinite spirit, which empowers you to do all things, also grants you the strength and wisdom to faithfully fulfill these vows. By the authority invested in me as an ordained minister of the Centers for Spiritual Living, I celebrate and confirm your installation as practitioners of Centers for Spiritual Living. And now my pleasure to um, invite up to, uh, both the uh, significant others of our practitioners so that we may bestow upon them our community stoles. So if you'll join us, H and Brian. And if you'll stand behind your beloved. My entire life. Your entire <laughs> life, of course. And as a symbol of your support of this beautiful being who has said yes to God in such a huge way to be a licensed practitioner. Will you please bestow upon them and their shoulders these stoles? It's a little tricky sometimes, but... <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. I've, and now I want to invite the practitioners, not the ministers. Now, we have always been trained as ministers that you're a practitioner first. But today is the practitioner's day. So I would like the practitioners for the Capistrano Valley community to please stand. You're way ahead of me. <laughs> You're way ahead of me. Would you please put place and bestow upon your own shoulders your stoles in a way of symbolically welcoming these two beautiful beings to our ranks as pra professional practitioners. And please remain standing as you get another opportunity to be appreciated. Please appreciate these folks. They are the backbone of our community and hold high consciousness for each and every one of you. Thank you. You may be seated. <laughs> and you two gentlemen may be seated as well. Thank you. And now it's my pleasure to invite our two newly minted practitioners to share in giving us our invocation for this morning. And uh, they need a mic. Jesus is joining us. 
Thank you for joining us today. In spirit, in mind, in body. There's one God, one good, one life. That life is ever present everywhere. And that life is mine. And I know that life is God, is good, is love, is light. And we evoke that in each and every one of us. I know it's true for me and I know it's true for everybody here today that we invoke our highest self, our Christ consciousness that opens our hearts and our minds to our highest self and let us be the light that shines here today and out in the world as we go about our business so we gather to shine our light together and bring it into the world as us, as God, as good, as love. And maybe you can chant a couple of ohms with me to feel that vibration of oneness. So take a deep breath. Um. that is in each of us, that unity that runs through us, that presence and that power, love, which is the greatest power of all. And I receive and accept for each one here, I realize for each one that they are in a consciousness of peace, that each one here feels whole in mind, body, and spirit. That each one here today feels the presence and the power of the divine. Feels that wonderful vibration and knows it is all good, it is all God. Each one receives exactly the nourishment, the nugget of wisdom that they are here to receive. And I release these words into the law of mind knowing it is so. Please join me in saying, and so and it so is. is. Amen. Thank you. And I th let's welcome them officially. Thank you so much. Woo! may be seated. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> and you may as well stay standing up on your feet as we, in, as we invite up Alan Dale for our musical piece. Thank you. Welcome, Alan Dale. You can sit down now. This song um, is one of Rick Dale's originals, and we're dedicating it today to Mary and Jody. So this is for you, ladies. The moment is right for believing that what you thought you were is only a step in beginning to make yourself aware tomorrow's beyond the horizon are never enough for today because you are the fruit of god's vision an angel on your way Forevermore reaching out Forevermore reaching in You finally finished Forgetting yourself Let the miracle begin Forevermore reaching out 
forevermore reaching in you're starting to remember who God made you to be recognize how you are shining from the inside out mindfully changing your thinking and thankfully finding what you're all about forevermore reaching out forevermore reaching in you finally finished forgetting yourself let the miracle begin forevermore reaching out forevermore reaching in you're starting to remember who god made you to be reborn as what god meant you to be transformed into divinity giving yourself to your destiny and seeing the light in all that you see yeah. forevermore reaching out forevermore reaching in you finally finished Forgetting yourself, let the miracle begin. Forevermore reaching out, forevermore reaching in. You're starting to remember who God made you to be. You're starting to remember who God made you to be. Starting to remember who God made you to be. Beautiful. Thank you. Perfect. What a perfect song for this morning. It really is um, a wonderful opportunity for us to really remember this powerful backbone of our community, which is the practitioners. So thank you, Mary, and thank you, Jody, for allowing us to bring you into our ranks. You're really welcome. My name is Reverend Alice Reed, and I am the spiritual director here at Centers for Spiritual Living Capistrano Valley, and I'm super happy to enjoy and to bring forth and to begin to explore the holiday season. I have to tell you a little confession. I love Christmas. <laughs> and I love Hanukkah. And I love all the pageantry and the decorations and the, and the people who are making that extra effort to really lift their hearts and the kindness that uh, folks really share with one another. Now, I know it's also coupled with a little bit of stress. <laughs> Sometimes we put too much on ourselves during the holiday. But our job here on Sundays is to remember the reason, the reason behind all the upliftment, the reason behind all the, the lights and the decorations. And it fits perfectly into finishing out our year of looking at this idea of timeless wisdom coupled with evolutionary vision. And so the December theme that we are embracing is the journey of becoming. And it fits beautifully into the idea or the deeper meaning behind many of the holidays. Right now we have, um, in the month of December, I believe there are probably more than this, but at least 15 different events and holidays and feast days that happen. And all of these are really coming forward to remind us of something. We have a, the Buddha um, and the Buddha's tradition. We're celebrating the enlightenment of the Buddha and his choice to sit under that Bodhi tree. We celebrate Advent, which is the excitement and the Christmas, which really celebrates that 
return of the Christ light, at least from our vantage point here as religious scientists, we have an opportunity to look at the um, Hanukkah, which is uh, ending today, tonight, which will be the final night of Hanukkah, and also we will be looking at Kwanzaa, which is a wonderful uh, holiday that has risen up over the last couple of years to really celebrate the heritage of the African-American community. So today I really want to look at this idea of Hanukkah. Our talk title is Surrender is Action. And when we look at the holiday of the Festival of Lights of Hanukkah, now it's a pretty minor holiday on the Jewish calendar, and it's, but it's the best known one, I think, because of its timing of, being, of happening at the same time that we have all these other holidays. And there's a beautiful story behind the, the uh, menorah and the Festival of Lights, and I want to share a little bit of it with you because I think that it really lends itself to us today. These, these stories, uh, the, the mythos, if you will, of Christianity and Judaism and, and the other spiritual and religious paths that folks are really elevating right now are steeped in meaning and we still practice many of these rituals today because there's something to it. It's not just something that happened long ago. There's something in it for us right here and right now. We are master meaning makers <laughs> in, in new thought. We know how to look at what is before us and to find the meaning for us so that we can open ourselves to a greater experience of the divine and Hanukkah's uh, absolutely a great example of that. As the story goes, <laughs> back way long, long time ago, um, the Jews were being oppressed by the Syrian Greeks and the emperor was imposing upon them uh, their ways and their laws and they were not allowed to um, congregate. They were, they were they were, many of their traditions were outlawed. They were told they couldn't eat the traditional foods that they were eating. And they were actually um, forced to begin to eating foods that were against their very fiber of their religion. They were asked to um, not practice their, many of the things that were so important to the to the very fiber of their religion. And finally, there was a law that the emperor had passed where they were not allowed to practice anything Judaic. As a matter of fact, the punishment was death. And with that, the high priest of the Maccabees had had enough. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. And, and despite the fact that the Greek and Syrian armies seemed to outnumber the Jewish community, they fought back. And amazingly, they won. And they took back their land and they took back their temple. And that was miraculous in and of itself. But that is not the point of the Festival of Lights. The point of the Festival of Lights is that when they went back into the temple to concentrate it, to, to consecrate it, to make it pure again through this beautiful ritual of lighting the lamp, which was supposed to burn for eight days, they found that through all the war and the upheaval that they only had enough oil for one night. But that did not stop them. They went on with their rituals. They went on with purifying that temple and they lit that lantern that first night. And amazingly, the lantern burned for eight full days so that they could purify the holy temple that was so important to their way of life. And so when we look at this beautiful story, what I hear in it for us today is that despite the fact that we might be experiencing 
hardships, despite the fact that we might be having something going on in our life, that we are called upon not to focus on the material in front of, not to focus on the events, the, the illness or the job that you're struggling with, or maybe the relationship or the diagnosis, not to focus on that condition, but to draw from deep within a deep and abiding faith that we are whole and that everything we need, we have within us. And that lantern represents the exact same thing, that everything we need, we have the, the Maccabees stepped into this situation, stepped into this beautiful rite of passage for their temple. And they paid no attention to the fact that they didn't have enough oil. They continued to walk it out. They continued to have faith. And we are called this day to continue to have faith. Maybe the darkness that you are experiencing is some kind of disagreement because of some political viewpoints of somebody that you love or, and care about. Maybe the darkness that you're experiencing is some kind of difficulty with your finances or your health. And maybe all you're really called to do is surrender like the Maccabees so that you can step into whatever it is that is going to be the next right thing that's revealed for you with complete faith and trust. The other thing that's happening right now around the holidays is Advent. And so last Sunday was they, uh, the Catholics lit the candle for hope. And so as we talk about this idea of having faith, hope is a little bit misunderstood, I think, in New Thought circles. Hope is really the place that we come to to have deep faith. And so born of that deep faith is the hope or the expectation of what it is that we want to experience, what it is that we want to bring forth despite any condition that we see before us. And then the second candle is love. And so after hope, we can step into this idea of knowing that it is our faith that simply raises our awareness so that love can make the way possible, so that love can guide us and direct us and give us the things that it, we need to come forth. Because we are always guided and guarded and directed. If we take the time to pause, if we take the time to listen, December in the shamanic and, and pagan and earth-based practices and spiritual understanding is really the basis for many of the religious practices that we do in the month of December. And we'll talk more about that in the coming weeks. But what I know for certain is that there is an abiding trust and hope and faith that the light will return. And metaphysically or symbolically, as we move through December, it is our opportunity to remember that too, that the light always returns. Every year it returns. It comes back. We have this time of darkness and that's the time to go within, that's the time for reflection, that's the time for coming home to ourselves. Advent actually in, in the Latin means coming back or coming to. And so I like to think of December as this opportunity for us to come to, to be awake again, despite the fact of anything that's around us that might be telling us that things aren't as they should be. It is our awakeness that invokes the light that allows us to see forward in powerful and potent ways. So I want to I want to share a, a wonderful quote that um, Ernest Holmes has in the textbook. And, and for me, this was when I came across it, it was one of my favorite quotes because I came to this teaching really appreciating the depth of surrendering that it wasn't giving up, but it was about letting go so that I could step into newness. And so Ernest Holmes has this to say, and he's actually referencing the Bhagavad Gita. 
he says, one of the ancient sayings is that to the person who can perfectly practice inaction, all things are possible. This sounds like a contradiction until one penetrates its inner meaning, for it is only when one completely practices inaction that they arrive at the point of the true actor. And the true actor is source. The true actor is the creative process. The true actor is that power and that presence that lives within you that wants to be raised up and expressed. And so when we can surrender, which is a little hard to do when there's a lot to do, <laughs> right? It's a little hard to do when there's a lot to do, but when can we can surrender, we can allow something to move through us, something bigger than our self, something bigger than this body temple that you walk around in, something that it's the same energy that keeps the stars aligned in the sky and keeps the earth revolving around the sun. It is the same energy that you're working with when you have that experience that you want to walk out in a different way. And so the, during this holiday season, I want to ask you a couple of questions, the things to think about this week and this month as we inhabit this this holy days of Christmas and Hanukkah and uh, all the other, the, the enlightenment of the Buddha and the solstice. Can you hold the high watch in your own life? Can you be the light that you need right now? Can you set an intention for more light, more love, more harmony, and more peace? Can you surrender your past experiences trusting that you are always sourced and that you are always cared for? And can you have faith that as you continue to make yourself available, knowing that God is meeting you in the highest idea of what it is you can truly embody? Her, Ernest Holmes also says, that God can only do through us, to, for us, what it can do through us. And so my invitation this month is to be the light. Even though it gets dark very early, even though it's a little colder, even though there's a lot of stress going on, just go on the five. <laughs> You'll see it. Even despite all those conditions, I, I want to invite you to be the light, to be that kind word, to be the healing consciousness that our world needs right now. We are uniquely equipped as practitioners, licensed or not. Some of you are outlaw practitioners. <laughs> we are uniquely positioned to hold the high watch, not only for ourselves and our family, but for our community, for our state, for our country and our world. And so as we move through this season of remembering the light until it comes back again, let us be that. And so instead of a, um, instead of a closing treatment, I'm going to light these candles to remind us of these sacred rituals that are always happening out in the world. And so we light this, we relight the first candle of Advent, which is hope. We light the second candle of Advent, which is love. And then we light the menorah, remembering that there is always light. And this center candle is the shamash. And the shamash is the candle that we light all the other candles with, remembering that like the shamash, we bring the light, we bring hope, we bring love, we bring joy, we bring peace. 
Thank you very much. Karen, Rick, you ready? Let's bring them back up. <laughs> Thank you. with this service now and uh, we have the blessing of Diane King Van helping us with this song. It's called We Are Light. A lamp that kept on burning A miracle they say but the world has kept on turning other miracles today. Everyone who lights the candles has a bit of ancient spark. We are miracles lighting up the dark. We are lights light of memory. Remembering times long. But the blazing of the candles is not the only light. Look at all of us shining here tonight. We are lights, we are lights of memory, remembering times long gone. We are glowing, growing. We are lights, we are lights, we are we are lights shining on and on and on. We are lights, we are lights of memory, remembering times long gone. We are glory. And I feel so full right now, so filled up. Do you feel it? This is why we give. We give to that which nourishes us. We give to that which feeds us. We give to that which lifts us up. And so this is our opportunity to do just that. We have three giving baskets this morning. There's one at the store one at the front door when you walk in, and also in the back of the room. So we invite you to 
um, share. You can also share on our website as well. Look us up. You can PayPal even, which is super convenient. And um, now we're going to read our affatory affirmation together. Will you join me now? My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. So when I was looking for something to tie in with all our beautiful themes that we have this morning, I found a lovely Michael Beckwith Ricky Byers tune called Radiant Light of God. So you know it, you want to sing along. Absolutely beautiful. We have the most amazing music director and band, don't we? Let's give them another hand. And we'd like to acknowledge all of our helpers, everybody that's been in service that this week that has made this possible for us today as well. Would you please stand so we can acknowledge you? And if our ministers and practitioners would also continue standing, these are the people that have been trained in the art and science of prayer. And our practitioners today that will be serving us are our new practitioners, Jody Charton, Mary Casa, and we also have Patrick Freeman. And you can get a prayer this morning. Well, I'm not sure where we're doing it in the tranquility room, or you can grab one of them. They have a stole on this morning. We'd love to pray with you. And now I think we have some announcements. Before we have announcements, we have birthdays. So if your birthday is in December, please stand. We want to sing to you. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday, Kate and Barbara. Okay, because of the festivities of today, there will be no conscious connection, but it will resume next Sunday. Our book study on Conversations with God completed book one and will take the remainder of December off. The book study will resume with book two on Wednesday, January the 5th at 10 a.m. on Zoom. And Shifting Sands meets on Zoom as well, Thursday mornings from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Coming Home to Spirit is a support group led by Joyce Stone that gathers on Zoom at 8 a.m. on Friday mornings. Everyone is invited to be a part of any one of these groups at any time. Come as you are. The Zoom links are available on your bi-weekly email and on our website. And if you're not getting the emails, call the office and ask to be added to the mailing list. And you still have an opportunity to purchase a poinsettia for our stage. So if you're interested in honoring, dedicating a poinsettia um, to somebody, there are forms available in the bookstore and now I think that's it sing our closing song then we get to please eat please rise yeah I am a light I am a light I am a light in this world we do shine. We shine this light so bright. I know that as we move through the rest of this afternoon, as we celebrate the wonderful vendors that are here, as we celebrate the wonderful brunch that we have for you, that we continue to shine in the fellowship. I give great thanks for this, and so it is. Thank you. Thank you.